It can't be that bad, oh, 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 it can't be that bad. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, welcome to another episode of ICBTB. ICBTB. Oh! Yes, dude. You got me. That's right, baddies. If you I... came here for a, a regular ICBTB episode. Get the fuck out. Because it's not, it can't be that bad today. It's, it can be that good. good. And if you listen to our April Fool special. Yes. We got you. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you listened to all, all 30, 30 minutes? minutes of it. Yeah. 30 and minutes if you of did, it. Did you hear the special message we left you at 30, 30 minutes, 15 seconds? Because I put something in there for you. Or did we? Mm, that's for you to find out. And if you skipped it like a sucker, go you're, back. You're a sucker. Give us that download. And do it twice. Yeah, sucker. because we need those numbers, sucker. That being said, we we aren't joking about how much cool stuff we are releasing on our store today. Yes. So let's get this uh, merchandise, capitalistic, disgusting pig shit out of the way first. Yes. We are both wearing new new shirts. Yes. We have new stickers. We have new keychains. We have new merch all across the board. It's April first. It's a new it's a new quarter. We've actually, thanks to you guys, have been doing actually pretty well yes we're doing you guys have been so supportive that's humble too I'm, we're actually like to not be humble we're being you guys are treating us extremely well yeah your support it means so much it is paramount and so to to give it back to you guys we are using that money to buy new merch new stuff to give back to you guys we're trying out new things christian had this incredible idea for this baddie shirt thank you very much he had this incredible idea for this uh, like last action hero shirt yes. which is that is how i look without a shirt by the way yes and um, he would be shirtless on these episodes but we don't want to get pulled for on youtube and we have four episodes that have been pulled already but you'll never see those yes we have keychains stickers guys otis stop kissing me stuff we have it can't be that bad stickers baddie stickers yeah. we're gonna get everything for you guys happy april happy 2021 yes thank you so much for everything you guys have done for us this is our thank you to you yeah we've been doing this for a, a year and a half now our numbers are slowly but surely growing and i'm so glad that you listeners are coming back and it, it really means something during depressing times like this entire covid year all of 2020 and even this be beginning to 2021 it's been hard but you guys give us a reason every single week to release these episodes because you know this is our creative outlet we used to be performers on stage prior to this and that was kind of stripped away given the circumstances of the world and so thank you for letting us do these things that we are so dearly passionate about we literally need this yes literally i mean the fact that you guys are coming back giving us great feedback for these episodes buying our merch and supporting us that means the world and so giving us feedback talking to us reaching out to us messaging us emailing us sending us fan art yes. sending us you know, movie suggestions. We honestly cannot thank the baddies enough. This episode is for you. Yeah. It can be that good. The yes. baddies can be that good. You are that good. You guys are great. Grade A baddies. Oh, man. I am I am not worthy to wear this shirt. Dude, I'm not. Let's just take off our shirts right now. Oh, but you'll see that on Patreon. <laughs> also, guys, let us know what you want to see on a Patreon. We're kind of dabbling in that idea. We have a lot of ideas that you guys have already shot us. But to be honest, we're kind of scared to ask you guys for money. So Yeah. Honestly? Yeah, honestly. Like, that's just out of my comfort zone. But isn't doing a podcast out of our comfort zone? Yes, everything that we've done is out of our comfort zone. But that's growth, baby. Hey. Yay. And that's why we're doing this special episode for y'all, our very first ICBTG episode. So let's just get straight to it, dude. We watched a movie called Zack, Zack Snyder's, Snyder's Justice, Justice League. League. That is right. It is fresh, pipe, and hot. And if you don't have HBO Max to watch this, what are you doing with your life? Honestly, this is a reason to get HBO Max. When they announced this film was one of the reasons why I said to myself, I'm glad I have HBO and I'm glad I'll be part of HBO Max because of this. Months ago when they first released it, HBO Max that is, mm -hmm. um, and announced this film. I was excited for it. A little bit of backstory for those of you who may not be as nerdy as myself or my counterpart here. Uh, also, my name is Alejandro, and this is my counterpart, Christian. Yes. Um, uh, w Justice League was a film. Uh, you're familiar with the Justice League and the Super Friends and Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, all of these great heroes. Justice League was a movie that was released in 2017 um, and had quite a huge... Uh, 
behind the scenes drama. Mm-hmm. Uh, the original director, Zack Snyder, uh, and his wife, Deborah Snyder, were, who was the executive producer, had an incredible, epic, like six film world that they had laid out. Um, and the, some some circumstances happened, some really unfortunate events happened that we'll get into in a little bit yeah. um, that pulled Zack Snyder away from the film. And Warner Brothers, what I learned was, used that as an opportunity to save their chairman's a bonus uh, knowing that AT&T was going to buy them afraid that AT&T was going to dissolve Warner Brothers and get rid of this film completely they thought they weren't going to get their bonuses that's why they forced this film out that's why they paid money for somebody like Joss Whedon that's why they made it become something in 2017 and didn't postpone the date and give Zack Snyder the time to they should have just done that because Joss Whedon Joss fucked Whedon. this movie up fucked it up so bad and even the 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 justice league is what people call uh, it gross so bad barf dude the, yeah that theatrical release i mean it was all the way from um like superman's f- cgi uh, upper lip mustache to how bad to the lack of character depth that steppenwolf had in the theatrical release so briefly just to get people up to speed and and stop me when i get too deep into it no because i am like salivating because i want to talk about this movie so badly mm-hmm. and this franchise so badly well we're I here dude we are notes. here so the original justice league uh is a sequel to the batman v superman film that Zack snyder had created which is a sequel to batman of steel mm-hmm. um the Justice League movie that came out in 2017, Sidebar, is a movie that I saw in movie theaters, a movie that I was so excited to see because I had literally followed the production of this film since the announcement of it uh, and like knew when Joss Whedon took over. I remember when they announced he was doing reshoots. I remember when it was announced that he was only using 10% of Zack Snyder's shots, and it was it blew my mind. And then I remember sitting in theaters and walking out of that theater and turning to my girlfriend at the time and being like, I'm sorry I made you sit through that. Because like that was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. It, it was boring. Visibly man. upset. Like it made me physically ill. Everything was rushed. These characters had no depth or arc. Very so many questions. He did the classic Joss Whedon face and boobs joke that he did also in Iron Man: Age of Ultron. That he also did in uh, uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron. Like Joss Whedon is kind of a gross man. It's good that it's being brought to attention that his uh, behavior on set was oh, inappropriate. And apparently he's also racist. I, which I'm not surprised at. He cut out Ray Fisher's role significantly. Yeah, because this Ray movie, Fisher was calling him out on the shit that he was doing. It. So, like, Rightfully if, so. Watching the, the Zack Snyder cut of this, it's all about Cyborg. Cyborg, like, he's the heart of the film. It is it, it, uh, an interview later on. Zack Snyder said, "Like, well, how come you didn't think that they were gonna make a cyborg movie?" He's like, "Because I didn't think I needed to set up one." He did set up one. Like, Look he said, this. "This is a cyborg origin story." At the same, this is like a four hander, to yes. be honest with you, because it's a cyborg origin story. It's a um, return of Superman story. Yeah. It's a creation of Justice League story, and it's also a grieving Lois Lane story. So many dramatic elements smashed into this four-hour film. Epic. Four-hour epic. So good. A six-part. Oh. So there's parts one through six. And and, and I'm going to say this right at the top, too. What? This is a co- the most comic book accurate comic book movie. Yeah. It takes its time. It explains things. It references other movies. It references the future, the past, alternates, and what's actually canonical in this storyline. Uh, and is just told beautifully in the Zack Snyder um, style. The colors, the looks, the music, the soundtrack is so fucking perfect. It is a cinematic it's masterpiece. Truly Zack Snyder's masterpiece. It is a completely different movie all the way from like the the soundtrack to the color correction to yes. all of the flashbacks yes. that were well needed because a lot of this in the 2017 theatrical release in uh, the Justice uh, League mm-hmm. So much was stripped away that at the end of the movie, you just you don't know if you want more because it was so lackluster, or if you just don't want it at all because it was so bad. One of my notes is all the questions that you leave the Justice League with mm-hmm. are answered in the Justice League, mm-hmm. but because they take four hours to answer, like they, it is. I will say Zack Snyder does kind of over explain things, and like there is a couple of very pedantic scenes where they're like. 
like the episode, the scene where Wonder Woman is just a, telling the story of Dark Side. Yeah, I wish they could have shown it without necessarily her just like telling the story. Um, which, oh, I see. Without her narrating in the background, because that kind of pulled me out. But that being said, that's a comic book story. Yeah, in a comic book, Wonder Woman would tell Batman this epic, and you would see it happening. Um, Zack Snyder is just incredible. I, I really you can tell that he was really passionate about this project, and he extremely wanted extremely passionate. You he he gave every character what they deserved. Cyborg was. His storyline in the 2017 theatrical release was non-existent. He, he was just no. he was just nothing. No. He he was just cyborg, but now we know so much more about um Victor Stone. Yes. So much more that you care for this guy. And he, everything even though it's 4 hours, we don't expect anyone to really finish this in one in one uh, sit through, yes. I, I didn't. In fact, it took me four days to watch it all because I literally had to turn it off at scenes because it would get so emotional for me. Mm-hmm. I would turn it off, and then before we record this episode, I watched it again in its entirety because I, I did, I do, I owe our baddies the yes. justice of that. Um, it's really good with having these parts. That's a good time to pause the film. It gives you that break i would even say in between those parts there's there's good breaks in between yeah watch it however you want to watch it because at the end it's so rewarding even the epilogue is it is such a thick epilogue screaming so screaming and screaming all of the answers that you get from this movie that you didn't get from 2017 are well earned and well deserved because now you know the backstories of every single character you care you care about them so much that it is so satisfying the ending is so satisfying and it's just it's well deserved it's heartbreaking that zack snyder's not going to get an opportunity to expand on a lot of the projects that he was hoping to work on we can get into that in a little bit but i really truly believe that the only reason why he was able to finish this movie and get a chance to make this movie is because, the, and this is a fact actually, um, of the pitch that he made to Warner Brothers of why he should finish the film. Mm-hmm. That being said, the pitch wasn't for him to finish the Snyderverse. The pitch was for him to finish this film for his daughter. That's what Warner Brothers agreed to. Good. That's what they signed for. That's what they're giving him. He already broke the contract in multiple different ways, which we'll get into in a little bit. But at the end of the day, they were going to let him make this movie at no matter what. Mm-hmm. The rest of the stuff is we, we, we they're going to go they're going to go by the numbers. This movie I love. Like I said, I followed this movie from the inception, from the creation, from Man of Steel. I love Zack Snyder's universe and his take on on Superman. This is a perfect trilogy of the Man of Steel. In fact, I wrote down in one of my notes um, how it breaks down of like the Man of Steel is how Superman is exposed to the world. He sh- he comes to Earth as the Messiah, as the God who comes to save us, and that's Man of Steel. Batman v Superman is how humans react to that. We would we would not like that. We would try to first be be against it and fight it, and that's Batman's representation of humankind fighting against not just aliens but a messiah complex and fighting against the true light bringer of what's going to help us. Because when an actual threat comes, who's there to save us? It's Superman. Yeah. Then this movie, Justice League, is the resurrection of the Messiah. Yes, and done way better than it was done in 2017. Let's do the ICBTG thing of it. Yes. And do the itty bitty nitty gritty. Yep. <clears throat> As I'm already out of breath and tired. Oh, man. We watched a film called Zack Snyder's Justice League, which was released in 2021 and is rated R. Totally forgot it was rated R. Dude, I had to look it up. The perfect amount of gore and swearing. It's not It's not too much. It's no. not a Quentin Tarantino film with the blood, but... Perfect amount of gore. The moments... In certain action sequences where there should be some gore. When they slam their head against the wall. Just the right amount. Or when an Atlantean gets cut in half. Yeah, a lot of people get cut in half. Or when people say the F word. Yeah, there's about three Three. F words. That's right. Uh, Has a runtime of four hours and two minutes. That's right. Great film. Totally worth every second of it. It has a rating of 73% on Rotten Tomatoes, 80 8.3% 8.3% on IMDb and a 54% on Metacritic. That is canonically all over the place. Yeah, I don't get it. How can you not? It's for the people that just wanted a... I think I can see how people don't like this film. They just wanted a quickie. That's why they couldn't sit through it, huh? Either you don't 
like Zack Snyder. There's a lot of Zack Snyder haters. Well, fuck out of here. There's a lot of comic book movie haters. Fuck out of here. And there's a lot of people who like the movies, not the comic book. And this is a very comic booky movie. No, you have to respect right? movies that derive from the source material, dude. You think about have how much to. people think about how many people hated his version of Watchmen. Because he changed uh, so, so much people. of it. Yeah, because it wasn't that I enjoy because I didn't uh, know the comic before. Yeah. I watched it objectively as a movie, and now I associate it as that first watch, right? Yeah. Still very entertaining, but I also respect the fact that people dislike it because it's not derived from the source material. Well, and the book is very different. I mean, you yeah. have you have my copy of it. Yes. Still. Yes. 19 months later. Yes. And it um, is so good. Yep. <laughs> um um, and I've also lent you another book that I don't yep. think I'll ever see again. No, you'll see it. Eh, you come over. I'll see it week. over there. Yeah, but you'll see it. <laughs> um, I just think the these are so good. Zack Snyder does such a good job of taking a story and making his own. Much like Logan was an amalgamation of three or four different Wolverine storylines mm -hmm. made into this perfect movie. Logan is just as good, if if not better. Than this film, they have their flaws, like every comic book movie does. Yep. But I like this idea of taking comic books and making your own story out. Well, of it. what's great is that this movie is just coagulated with so many different Easter eggs. At least four different comic books, two different shows, and then like the the Zack Snyder universe itself. Dude, but that's giving the fans what they want. You want to be able to a lot, be, of, a lot of service, fan it, service. It feels great to be in on an inside joke. Oh, I feel like I'm the most inside of insides. Yeah, because you're noticing all the small things in here. Have you noticed what the Google users rated this? No, I haven't what? noticed it at all. Go ahead and give me your notice. 89%. Google users rated this film. I want to change it. 95%. Oh my God. I think people loved it. It is 95%. Is it? It's exactly 95%. It is. Good. Google users finally coming through and speaking the truth because it should be 100%. This movie was a masterpiece. Even if you don't like it, you have to understand that this is a gift to a man's daughter. Yeah. And so it truly is that at the end of the day. At the very end of the movie, after the epilogue ends, because um, I know it's jumping, there's like five different endings that they shoot at us love it all with cliffhangers uh, having us just hoping hoping that there's going to be like some sort of a sequel by snyder because no. that's what he was cooking up with yep, these alternate yep. endings he gives us all the alternate endings everything and i'm like i don't deserve these endings they're all great but i'm getting theories from it we'll get into i got we'll get a bunch it. of theories but anyway at the end of it, it says four autumn. autumn yes and autumn snyder was zach's daughter who Passed away tragically due to suicide. Yeah. Um, during the production of this film, in fact, he tried for months after her death to work on this film, and it just wasn't working. And I honestly you. believe Warner Brothers used that as their opportunity to release him from his contract, bring in Joss Whedon, save their bonuses, because they knew that AT&T was buying Warner Brothers, which is a whole big thing um, that I would love to get into, but... But we're talking about how this movie can't be that good. Yes. Not the the real shitty part about this film. So, But you see the heart in this film. The fact that you're dedicating this film to your your late daughter. There's small things in there. There's a billboard in this broken city. Uh, not this broken city. As uh, Batman drives away in the Batmobile, the Mercedes Bat... Or the, the nice-ass Mercedes oh, Benz yes, that they the, got. The like, prototype Mercedes. Yeah, yep. when he picks up uh, the, Flash, the Flash, Barry Allen... And they drive off. In the background, you see this uh, electronic billboard, and the billboard is a suicide hotline. And it's to bring awareness to suicide prevention. Just small things like that just show the love. You know we'll that go ahead and put the number for the suicide hotline right here. Right here, um, because everyone should help themselves if you need help. Right? Yes, reach out to people, guys. I'm a big proponent of therapy, and if you need whatever just reach out not to us we're not we i mean if you really need to reach out to us but there's better yes. people than us yes yes people who are more qualified than us yes i am not good with emotions so yeah. let's just reach out to people who matter this number we'll tell you jokes and hopefully they make you laugh and mine won't uh, uh synapses coming right at you fueled by his restored faith in humanity and inspired by superman's selfless act bruce wayne Enlists newfound ally Diana Prince for a far even greater threat 
Together, Batman and Wonder Woman work quickly to recruit a team to stand against a newly awakened enemy. Despite the formation of an unprecedented league of heroes, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg, and The Flash, it may be too late to save the planet from an assault of catastrophic proportions. Man, that is an epic synopsis. This movie uh, had an original budget of $300 million. Uh, and then Zack Snyder had an additional $70 million to finish it. So this movie was knocking on $400 million to be made. It looks like it. And I love, I, w- I wish I could pay double. They paid attention to every single second of this four-hour Every film. frame is painted beautifully. It's so beautiful. There's something about Zack Snyder who just has this vision even in movies like Sucker Punch, which is just visually appealing. It's so contextualized and so Zack Snyder's vision. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's very clearly a Zack Snyder film. Yeah, and I wouldn't have any other way. I wouldn't. As much as I love uh, the Avengers movies that came out, this I think I like more than all of the Avengers put together. because And the story behind it. The Avengers, you know, Marvel... The Marvel Cinematic Universe is great, and it's, but this is very different. The, the story behind it, just like the fact that there was a struggle with getting the true version of this movie out just makes it that much more beautiful. Warner Brothers tried really hard to recreate what Disney did with the Avengers and the MCU, and that was a huge mistake on their part. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they'll be paying for it for the next 20 to 30 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really going to hurt. DC Comics and hurt Warner Brothers and AT and T now that they're the parent company um, in making films because now they're doubling down on the multiverse theory. The Flash film has been in development hell. They canceled the Cyborg movie. Their uh, the Batman film that would have been so great with Ben Affleck the solo Batman was film, replaced yeah. with the Robert Pattinson, which will also be great, but is going to be different. Yeah, uh, they're doubling down on the multiverse theory, where I think again MCU is going to do it better. Um, instead of just doing their own thing, which would have been a Snyderverse. Yeah, you don't have to copy your your Competition. rivals. Yeah, yeah. Just because their structure was that proves successful. that they're su- that proves how good they are. Yeah. You ever notice how Burger King always talks about how shitty the the uh, Big Mac is, but I've never heard about how shitty the Whopper is on a McDonald's commercial. Right, because they're confident in their product. We McDonald's don't have just to knows talk that we're the, the best. Yeah, exactly. Ex- DC should have just doubled down on like what it had and just gone in its own direction. It's orig- originality sells, man. Christopher Nolan and Deborah Snyder saw the Justice League, mm-hmm. and they told Zack Snyder not to ever, ever see that movie. I wonder if he's if he checked it out once. No. Good. He, as, he should not. Compared to this, he yeah. should not. This is so much better. Um, Dude, let's get into it. I mean, how do, we've already talked about so much. I mean, this movie is so incredible. This is a movie I waited my whole life to see because the return of Superman, the black suit Superman, the creation of the Justice League are things that as a kid, I've yeah. always wanted to see. And I'm not nearly as big of a fan of DC Comics or the Justice League or like Batman as much as you are. That that was your yeah. childhood and background and I've always been I've always liked it. But like I, this was a movie that I thought that I needed so much that I didn't know that I needed this much, right? I for sure so me too. exciting. Me too. And you know, I wasn't a big Batman fan until fairly recently. I've read at least two or three different Batman arcs yeah. in their completion um most recently than any other arc that I've read. I recently read Batman White Knight which is an insane story about how the Joker goes sane. Uh, and in fact, they kind of reference it a little bit in this film too, because there is a little bit of like a gay love thing that they kind of hint at at White Knight, which is the same thing they kind of hint at in this film, um, almost kind of like tongue in cheek. Mm. But it is, but again, Zack Snyder clearly read 40 comics and made his own storyline, which is incredible that, that he was able to do that. Um, but yeah, I read Batman Year One. Uh, and then right now I'm reading um, A New Frontier, which is like a DC comic of like, what if the DC superheroes took place in real life post-World War II? How would real people react to it? And like, it's a very, very interesting storyline um, that I'm just completely in love with the artwork and the story and, and, and the creation of it. Um, but 
that's a whole nother beast. We're talking about Zack Snyder. No, Justice but you League. are the uh, I'm, ideal I'm trying viewer. really hard to not nerd out on this episode. No, dude, nerd out as much as you can because that's what this episode is for. I, because I could nerd out on so many different levels of this film. Mm-hmm. I can nerd out of it, on it on how great of a director Zack Snyder is. I can nerd out of it, nerd out on it on the drama behind the scenes of this film, the drama on scene of this film, mm-hmm. and then like just the the comic book lore that's actually shoved into this film. This is that we see two Green Lanterns in this film. We yeah. see the Hall of Justice in this film. We see Doomsday's Omega eye beams in this film. Yeah. We see the black Superman suit. We see Batman in four different vehicles. We see Ryan Choi, aka the Atom. Yes. I had to do research on that. I'm like, wow, they're giving this guy some lines. He like seems more significant than he was. Star Labs. Yes. They're making everything. This film takes everything in the DC universe and gives it the proper amount of justice. They, they, you know, the 2017 theatrical release was so forgettable in my mind that I didn't even realize that Darkseid wasn't in that movie. And they didn't speak of Darkseid. They didn't show him at all. They introduced him here in this movie, in Zack Snyder's cut, and essentially gave Steppenwolf uh, a motive that made him more, that allowed us to be sympathetic toward what his obje- objectives were, right? He was I just mean, trying to just prove his loyalty. But it proved, yes, yes. But it proved that, do you remember a couple of weeks ago when I was saying, I don't understand why they give bad guys redeeming arcs? Yes. I don't like redeeming arcs. I like understandable backstories. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, something where like you don't have to agree with him necessarily, but you could understand why he would be doing it. I don't it. need to see Pedro Pascal save his, save his son and love him at the end of the day because he really honestly shouldn't ever be close to that kid. CPS should have been there immediately. Yep. But I understand why Steppenwolf wants to destroy Earth because he's trying to prove his worth back to the greater god, Darkseid. Darkseid, yes. Dude, he... Th- there's scenes of Darkseid where they literally just cut and pasted him out and put Steppenwolf in for the for the Justice League. Yeah, for the flashback where it was showing uh, in the original one, it yep. was Steppenwolf that went to old Earth and fought the old school defenders of Earth, right? Is it even a flashback or it's Wonder Woman explaining what happened before, right? Yes. So it's not even... And in this sense, it was... In this movie, it was Cyborg's Nightmare. Right when, when we see Darkseid, no, you're no, right. No, that is you're when Wonder 100% Woman is ta- right. She's talking about why Darkseid is coming to Earth. Thank you. I've shot four boxes. Trulies, and I just need to kind of. <laughs> I need you here to keep me on track, and that's why I love you. Well, I don't blame you, dude. This was such a long, <laughs> saturated hours, movie that it's easy to forget small 242 details. Two hundred and forty-two minutes for Melissa, who has been just punching herself in the mouth because I haven't said it yet. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um. um no, I I think this movie does a good job of understanding it, and 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 maybe you need a shaman for this film, somebody like me or somebody like you or, you know, a nerd to watch this film with you. But it is really worth it. Like I think if even if, even if you've never seen Man of Steel or Batman v Superman, which you've seen neither, uh, Man of Steel I watched when it came out. Okay, but you never saw Batman v Superman, which is very directly correlated to this film. It yes. takes place seconds. In, in fact, the opening scene is from. The end of Batman v Superman. You know what's crazy is that this is the first time that I saw Ben Affleck as Batman. As Batman, is he not one of the best Batman? He's amazing. He's an incredible Bruce Wayne. He's the perfect and an incredible chin Batman. Yes, for a Batman, he's, he's the a perfect gr- girth for a Batman. He's an incredible. And you know what hurt his Batman the most? What Justice League? That's because if they had come out with that solo Batman movie, it would have been incredible. His Batman film that he was supposedly supposed to do was going to be. Um, Deathstroke uh-huh. going after Bruce Wayne because spoilers Lex Luthor tells him Batman's secret identity at the yes. end of this film and that was the lead up oh, Deathstroke played by Joe Joe Mangalino how do you see yeah, Man- Mangalino Magnolias Man- Joe Magnolias Man- 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 he's not Italian something dude is he Italian maybe I thought he was like Spanish I feel like a lot of a lot of people are Italian his Deathstroke is incredible in fact even his Deathstroke in the flashback is even better um, my question is he was not allowed to do Zack Snyder was not allowed to do reshoots for this film, but he told them, Fuck you, I'm doing reshoots. What, what so do you what think scenes? Oh, <gasps> that's why you're asking me. Dude, what do you I was think trying to figure reshoots? it out. I definitely think the all of the second nightmare was reshoots. 
Yes. And the Martian Manhunter scenes were reshoots because Ben Affleck, out of contract, did these did the Batman role. And that was one of the things that Warner Brothers was really afraid of. Like, do we need to put a star, a mega star like Ben Affleck back on contract to do this thing, knowing that he's not going to do other films, knowing that he's not going to do other stuff? Now they and brought he, him back. And he did it because he had such a devotion to Zack Snyder's image of what this film should have been that he willingly took this role again, knowing that it was going to be just yep. a one-off thing because he doesn't want to do the Batman. Yep. Jared Leto yes. not having... We talked about it on our Suicide Squad episode over a year ago, but Jared Leto had so much potential. You could tell that that actor was trying to put his blood, sweat, and tears into that role. This is it. And not trying to be overshadowed by the great Heath Ledger's interpretation of the Joker. Different Joker. Different Joker, right? That's fine, DC. Let's do a multiverse. Let me see more of Leto's Joker. And Zack Snyder allowed that to happen, even if it was for a small five-minute scene, just so that we could see Ben Affleck as Batman and Jared Leto's Joker interact for the first time ever since we're here already the post it's essentially a post credit scene if it was a marvel movie that would be a post credit scene but we get to see batman's second nightmare of what the potential future could be if superman goes bad and in it batman has created this dark justice league that consists of batman cyborg barry allen's the flash mira as now the Queen of Atlantis. Who is trying to avenge Arthur. Arthur Curry's death. And uh, Deathstroke, Wade Wilson. With a mohawk. <laughs> and then the, and then to round it all out, Jared Joker. Leto's Joker. Which is, and the small amount of details. Did you recognize that he was wearing a SWAT vest? Did you, rec- did you see all of the badges that he's wearing? I didn't see the badges, no. He has like... 15 badges on his chest and i've read that those are all of the police that he killed he's still proud of the fact that he's even in this him and batman have this interaction back and forth of like Mm. um you know you need me the so good the storyline was going to be that that group was going to steal a mother box to send Flash, jo- uh, Joker was the only person crazy enough to be able to steal a mother box from Darkseid to send Flash back to the original timeline of Batman v Superman to warn Bruce Wayne that if Lois dies, which is, Superman will go bad. Which, this is where Zack Snyder is a fucking genius. genius. There is a small moment in the middle of this movie where Ben Affle- where uh, Bruce Wayne says to uh, Diana Prince, um... Barry Allen was just, I had a dream. Barry Allen was just here. And he said that Lois Lane is the key. And she was like, yeah, uh, every woman is the key to some man's heart or something like that. Right. And he was like, no, it's something much darker than that. And what that means. And baddies, if you haven't watched this movie yet, obviously there's going to be spoilers. So pause right now, watch the movie and watch, come back to this six days later. You're you're (laughs) fucked. You're mega fucked. But what that means is that, if Lois Lane, if Batman allows Lois Lane to die, that essentially is the catalyst for Superman to go bad and to destroy the world and to, uh, to catapult them into the nightmare universe that is depicted yep. in both Batman v Superman and even further fleshed out at the ending of this movie. And again, in the middle of this film. Oh, so good. This, like I said, Zack Snyder is so good at reading six or seven different comic books and making them fleshed out into one already off off the cuff if i can flex my nerd brain a little bit this film has a bunch of comics that i can see that it's it's reflects its influences on one of course is the death and the return of superman very hugely influenced this film the second one that i see a big influence on is the Dark Knight Returns, where Batman and Superman have their fight, and Superman kind of reinstills this faith in Batman. This is the first time where we see Batman working on faith. He says it three times in this film. I'm working purely on faith, Alfred. I'm working on faith instead of the logic detective Batman. Mm-hmm. I would love to see Detective Batman. I think Robert Pattinson's going to be Detective Batman. Yeah. But this is great faith-based Batman. And it's not like we're just seeing a different Batman. It's They explain it right there. It's not necessarily that he's changed. He's growing. He's trying to be that kind of Batman. And he even says, like, look, I tried to break apart Superman. I tried to destroy him thinking he was bad, but I learned my lesson. This is a reformed Batman. Because it's weird to think of Batman in the Justice League. 
Yeah. It's always been a weird thing to me of why Batman's in the Justice League because he's not supposed to be with people. It just doesn't think... And like, also, why does he keep making the Bat family bigger and bigger? I thought he hates people. And I know they said this in the 2017 version, but when Barry Allen gets in the car and says, by the way, what's your superpower? Mm-hmm. To Bruce Wayne, he says, I'm, I'm rich. rich. And it like, drives off in the Mercedes. I love that that was a Zack Snyder line. It makes more sense and is mm-hmm. more is better delivered in the Zack Snyder verse than it is in the Joss Whedon. In the Joss Whedon one, it seems like one of his like <laughs> making a joke. Yeah. None of the father scenes between Barry Allen and his dad were in the 2017 version, huh? One of them was. Very okay. small, very small. He talks to Billy Crudup for just a second. But what they did add was, oh, right at, near the beginning of the film, you see Barry Allen applying for this job at this pet store. And oh, he saves this woman. That's Iris West. And who that is, is his an future incre- wife. Who is his future wife? I have to pee again. Go I'm ahead, so pee. This fucking, is exciting. Fucking sorry, but I want to talk about the Iris West scene so yes. fucking much. I'll keep it at the forefront of my mind. Oh fuck! I'm so sorry. And we are back. Iris West. That scene. When I first saw the clips of that scene in the trailer, it's fucking beautiful. I I did not like Ezra Miller's rendition of the Flash in Joss Whedon's uh, creation of it. Thus, I didn't think that he was going to be a good Flash. I didn't like his cameo in the Batman. Flash TV show. Oh, that's right. I didn't. I thought he was not very good, but I loved his version of the Flash in the Zack Snyder verse because it's completely fleshed out and explained. We needed context because yes. without all that context, without Barry Allen's backstory that was added to this Zack Snyder cut, then he was just a hack comedic relief character. And and yes. Yeah, I, I I have nothing to add to that because they use Barry Allen as the comedic relief, but that's not what Barry Allen is. He's actually a very pivotal superhero. Yeah. What I learned about him, something about funny people, comedians, is that we're expected to be funny all the time that to the point where it becomes a defense mechanism. In this movie, you see him literally just save his future love of his life. And then after that, he goes to visit his father in jail. And then after that, he goes back to his... uh, No, no, Batman uh, meets him at his lair. And he's acting like nothing's wrong. He's eating pizza. He's not talking about all of... All the heavy shit. The fact that he can't make his father proud by getting a job job. Well, and yeah, and he doesn't tell Batman all that... His whole goal is that only when he's knocking on the door of the Speed Force does he mention like, Hey, Dad... This is for you. I'm with the best of and them. And that's to himself. Oh, I fucking... That's that, to himself. That made me cry. I cried three times in this film. That He's was one of them. He's a fleshed out character, man. The Flash has never been to me that deep of a character. I know in comic book lore, he's very, very, very intense. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, but, my gosh. But I always stayed on the cusp of it, and like it's very, very good. Um, I want to finish up my thought of the comics that I see as Zack Snyder yeah, delving but- into. So, the Bat- um, Superman... Returns in death, the Dark Knight Rises, the Batman v Superman is a direct correlation of the Dark Knight Rises where Batman comes back and fights. Also, the whole Rebirth series of DC starts with the Flash coming from an alternate timeline to see Batman. What's really, really interesting is in the comic book, he's coming to warn Batman. He hands Batman a pin, Mm -hmm. a smiley face. With blood on it. Oh, get the fuck out of here. It's correlation with Watchmen. Tell me how fucking crazy it would be if Zack Snyder had done that. I'm trying to find the sharpest edge of this table so I could just Kill bang yourself. my head against it because I could die happy right now. Th- that's why I, I brought up baddies. I brought a, a stack of comics here um, because they all mean something. This one is the death of Superman, which is when Superman is killed by Doomsday. This is more Batman v Superman for those of you who are interested. Um, fun fact about the death of Superman. When this issue was released, not a single crime was reported in America. That is a fact 100% true. <laughs> Wow. Yep. Um, this is uh, the rebirth issue of Superman. I'm um, currently on a quest to have every rebirth issue of DC. So if you have any rebirth issues in uh, 8.2 and higher condition, I would like to buy that from you. Uh, this is my favorite cover. Uh, shout out to Jordan Schatzel. She's the one who got this for me. She tracked this down. I've been looking for this issue for a long time. She found this out at Cape and Cowell in Oakland. So shout out to Cape and Cowell in Oakland. This is an incredible cover. 
Um, it's Superman ripping his shirt off. I'm sorry, it's Clark Kent ripping his shirt off to reveal that he's Superman. This is the DC Rebirth, where you can see the Flash. Barry Allen is grabbing hands with the Wally West Flash. This is what I was just telling you about, where the Flash is getting to Batman. In fact, at the very end, he gets to Batman and hands him the Watchmen button. Mm. Oh, my gosh. This is Superman's 1,000th issue. This is actually doesn't have to do with the movie we just watched, but it's actually just an incredible issue because it's about four or five different artists' stories of them. Uh, one of the stories involved is Superman in the future when the Earth is dying. One of them is a story of the characters in the car that Superman crushed in the first ever Superman issue. One of them is a story of... Um, Perry White from the... It's just an incredible issue. Superman 1000, four different cover variants. I went with the Asian American issue because I am an Asian American. Nice. Superman and Wonder Woman. This is an incredible compilation of all the issues where Superman and Wonder Woman kind of do it because that's really super sexy. Steamy. This is Kingdom Come. This is the issue in the future where Superman and Batman are opposing each other uh, because the world has ended and Superman no longer wants to be a hero. So there's actually a triple threat match between Superman's Justice League, Batman's Justice League, and Lex Luthor's Justice League. This is the Superman Elseworld issues. This is where Superman would have landed in Gotham and becomes a Batman. This is where Superman landed in the Civil War Sounds and helped fight America there. This is where Superman lands um, in the medieval times and is a knight. Uh, incredible issue. Totally, totally recommend it. This is an issue of Lex Luthor, the Man of Steel, where Lex Luthor is told to be the hero and Superman is the bad guy. Also an incredible take. I love this um, quid pro quo of like, what if he is the bad guy and we can try it out? Uh, and then lastly, this one that we have featured since Tuesday is the Superman, the Man of Steel issue, which was a reprint of some of the original stories that were printed in the 90s of Superman's origin story um, before the Infinite Crisis. Thank you. Whew, I got all my nerd out. That's fucking incredible, though. You know, I do envy the fact that you had that you grew up with comics. And you that, envy that? I envy that because that's that's a a source of entertainment that I never really dove into. Not that I was, uh, what do you, what's the, what's the word for uninterested? It? Not that, yeah, not that I was uninterested or that I found it like unappealing. It's just that I never just had the opportunity. I was already occupied with TV movies sure, and video games. Sure. Right. But th this is where it comes in handy, knowing the source material, uh, and then watching the movie. Right. The reference is also another Batman and flash have another reference where they, where he, comes out of a different multiverse where Flash hands Batman a letter from Thomas Wayne, where in an alternate universe, Thomas Wayne becomes Batman because you know who dies in the alley was Bruce. Bruce. And, and so, so his in a, dad in an alternate line, Tom line, Thomas Wayne becomes Batman. And there's a letter from, and when I first read that letter in the rebirth issue of Thomas Wayne's letter to Batman, dude, like comics really gets me. I was telling someone the other day, I think I ruined this first date with it, but I was explaining to somebody how comics are movies, um, but so much more intense. You can read comics, just read the words, fly through it in two minutes and just get a book out of it. Yeah. Or you can read through comics, just look at the pictures and just get a movie out of it. Mm -hmm. Or you can read comics two, three, four times, read the words, look at the pictures, read this character's point of view, just his pictures. Like it's so many different aspects that you can get. Comic. And then in comic books, you'll get to the point where in the corner, it'll say, if you want to know more about this, read issue 723 of Batman. So now you got to go find issue 723 of Batman to find out this weird connection. And now you're caught into this whole storyline of Batman. It, Zack Snyder did it perfectly in this film, oh. referencing other films, referencing other properties, touching into other things. His plan was to have in, in the supposed lineup of suicide squad that david ayers was supposed to make in the third suicide squad batman was going to kill harley quinn just like he references in this film that's right could you imagine seeing ben affleck killing margot robbie i don't know warner brothers would never I let that be don't it would have to be a rated r film but also margot robbie since she is because such they're a trying to keep money that property. maker yes warner brothers would never let that not yet until they knew this is now they still it. won't you don't think so? At, let's say, let's say, Birds of Prey Part Five comes out, and we're done after this, and they've made billions of dollars. You don't think they'd be like, okay, Margot they, Robbie's aging out, let's just kill her off? They barely made millions on Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey was an interesting one that I didn't fully. That was a clear cash enjoy. grab to me. Yeah, because and even um, Pat Patty Jenkins, who directed Wonder Woman, yeah, says that like you. I mean, 
I don't know if she said it, but she says her Wonder Woman is based directly on this Wonder Woman because she saw this cut before it was done, and that's what she based her Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 84 on. Wonder Woman 84, we did an episode on. It's very clearly completely bastardized by the I studio. I fucking hated it. What I wanted, I, I'm glad you brought this up. What I wanted in Wonder Woman 84 was this Wonder Woman. The, that opening, was- the opening of this Wonder Woman in the museum makes more sense than the entire Incredible. two hours of Wonder Woman 84. One of the best action scenes the way, in the it, entire it movie. Finally, I finally like her being able to have like super speed and like being able to dodge bullets. It finally looks really good in this scene when she saves them in the museum. There were small details that they added to Wonder Woman herself in this movie that made it way more incredible. Instead of the... There was very generic uh, climactic music that backed Wonder Woman's appearances in the film right but here they swapped it with uh ancient uh like amazonian type uh, background music that made it a it's, little more intense it's the same music from the original wonder woman film mm. because patty jenkins heard that music and kept wonder woman's theme for the original wonder woman film oh wonder woman in the first movie has this exact outfit in wonder woman 84 it's different it yeah it is different because they changed it to fit justice league which was brighter in color Lighter in tone nope, nope, and nope. easier in, in They should emotion. have gone with the desaturized Zack Snyder color correction that went that was in this cut. So good. I wanted the Wonder Woman that, spoiler alert, beheads Steppenwolf right before he enters the portal. I thought even Woo! watching this in the moment, I was like, oh, he's going to cut her. She's going to cut him in half. She's going to cut him in half. She decapitates him and ah! it's fucking bad. Satisfying. Ass. So fucking good. Wonder Woman has the best arc in any story in this film. Mm-hmm. Like, she is truly the most powerful woman I've ever seen in this film. Their arcs in this joint movie are better arcs than I've seen other superheroes in their solo films. Agreed. This this sets up Cyborg better than any Cyborg solo film could have done. Yep. This sets up Aquaman better than the Aquaman film did. Yeah, because now we're seeing his interactions with, uh, Vul- what's his name, Vulk? Uh, Vulcan and Mera. And M- Mera, played by Amber Heard. Um, and then Willem Dafoe, yes. Because uh, I don't remember Willem completely. Dafoe. Yes! Willem Dafoe and J.K. Simmons was only in for like five seconds. Yo, J.K. Simmons as, uh, as uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Gordon. Gordon is crazy because what I associate him with is uh, at the Whiplash? Daily Bugle. Oh, J. Jonah Jameson? <laughs> yes, that's who he is to me. More than anyone else, and more than any other character, he is him. And so seeing him as Commissioner Gordon and not Gary Oldman, I was just like, okay, I have to rearrange all of these neural connections in my brain. I do think that might be one of Zack Snyder's only mistakes. I think is, he could... Is double dipping on J.K. Simmons. Ooh, good way to put it. Double and, dipping, yeah, man. Yeah, double dipping J.K. Simmons and making him such a polar opposite of J. Jonah Jameson, where J.K. Simmons is a perfect J. Jonah Jameson. Yes, and not necessarily... Uh, Gary Oldman was a better Commissioner Gordon. That being said, Jeffrey Wright's Commissioner Gordon in this new Batman that's coming out, I think he might be the, the one. Commissioner Gordon. Ooh, ooh, I'm just excited, dude. I am so excited for what's to come. I, I like this idea of the multiverse. I hope... My, my, I'm going to put my my ideas out now that the Flash movie, based on all the things that I've read, is there's going to be some sort of multiverse aspect. He's going to meet Keaton's Batman. He's going to meet Ben Affleck's Batman. And he potentially might even meet Christian Bale's Batman. Mm-hmm. And the storyline is going to be him finally ending in Pattinson's Batman. If they want to try and tie it all together, I don't know what they can do. Sometimes just or Sometimes Warner Brothers will have us think one thing. And yeah. then change their mind in the final production because that's what they did to us in this film. Wait, but it is confirmed that in the future Flash movie that Keaton is going to be making an appearance. Um, as an actor. Oh, not as like an older Batman? That hasn't been confirmed. I hope so. That'd be kind of cool, man. I hope it's Michael Keaton as Batman. Be- Remember um, Batman Beyond? Yeah. I think Michael Keaton makes a a better old man Bruce Wayne. For sure. Well, at this point, I, he can't play like a younger Bruce Wayne. No, he's, well, he's been I mean, through the ropes. With the face Irishman technology, they can do possible. anything. Yeah, very um, possible. But in some of the concept art, the Flash is running in front of Michael Keaton's Batman. Woo. Uh, let's talk about the Flash real quick. because I love, I love it in this film. They make him so great. The time 
the fact that he is able to manipulate time with how fast he is, if he is able to surpass the speed of light. But also not sure if he can. The fact that he's learning it, again, an origin story for the Flash, kind of. The fact that he's saying, I don't like to break this rule and I shouldn't because I weird things happen when I do it. But when they were trying to revive Superman, uh, you know, underground... And the mother box is being dropped. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the the uh, the Kryptonian ship. When the mother box was being dropped on the floor, and he had probably like a uh, one millionth of a millisecond to like rev to, up to to initially charge it up. The amount of details that were paid attention to, he was running, and it was already too late. In Cyborg's mind, in Cyborg's prediction, the end of the world was already you know the future had been set in stone. Until Barry Allen runs so fast that you see the mother box as it's dropping stop in its direction, go back up, showing that time was reversed. It had dipped in the water, come back up, and he had given it its charge. Did you realize that? No. You know what I'm talking about though, right? You just blew my fucking mind, Christian. The mother box came down, Barry Allen runs, mother box goes up. A few Do you inches. know what you're saying? That means what Cyborg saw in the future, what the computer was warning Cyborg, was Batman's nightmare was real. It was real. It wasn't a because fake they prediction. Did, because, because they weren't able to get it. But that, but, and you know what else that is? What? The reference of, of, Do you know what else that is? The reference of the Flash turning back time? What? Superman, the movie. When Superman, in the original Richard Donner Superman film with Christopher Reeve, Superman flies so fast around the world, he stops time and reverses yep. the time so Lois Lane isn't dead. This is yep. a weird callback to Superman's Richard Donner. I bet you Zack Snyder thought of that. A million percent, dude. Yes. That's why it stops yes. for a second and reverses. And then later on, that comes back in a more intense way, in a more During the climax. Way, when, when the Flash is like, okay, well, I have to do it. He flies. He runs so fucking fast that he's resetting time. Yeah. Yeah. After the mother boxes at the end of the movie, after the mother boxes unite and destroy the world and all of the superheroes. Dude, I love this film more now. You see him. Oh, it's oh so my God. good. Can we talk about the visual of him going back in time and Superman's molecule by molecule coming back together? Wonder Woman, Batman, Cyborg. Cyborg's face going from building destroyed. Back to, building back so together. fucking gorgeous. Beautiful. Him running toward the explosion, implosion of the mother boxes and seeing his environment around him go from destroyed back to reconstructed is an incredible scene within itself. All in slow motion, all while he's making us cry by saying, this is for oh, you, Dad. Fuck. The fact that that was all put together, the fact that Joss Whedon and Warner Brothers had the audacity to remove such dramatic, fleshed out elements like this... Fuck you. Well, hang on. Not that I ever want to defend Joss Whedon because he is a disgusting human and I don't want to defend Warner Brothers in this time. But what do you think that Flash stuff was filmed? Or was this a reshoot? Do you think that post credit or not post credit, but do you think that nightmare scene was filmed? Do you think I think a lot of the Ray Fisher stuff was was filmed because he said he claims and probably rightly so a lot of his part of the film was cut out. And now seeing this version Fuck yeah, clearly Joss Whedon is a huge racist because he cut out a bunch of shit. Yeah. Um it's it's incredible. I I we will never know because that's Hollywood magic. What was a reshoot and what wasn't? Mm -mm. Um we can only assume because Joss Whedon says he only used 10% of Zack Snyder's footage. Zack Snyder says he used 0% of Joss Whedon's footage, which is pretty fucking clear. Um but what we'll never know is what was the reshoots. Yeah. Yeah. For Snyder's. Um, because we also don't know who came back for the reshoots. Yeah. We don't know if Cavill came back for- These are busy him. actors, man. We don't know if Gal Gadot came back for the shit. Uh -huh. I bet you the only actor, Ezra Miller is not doing anything right now and has been very radio silent for a long time. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he was able to do reshoots. Um, I know Joe Magna Mag 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 Magnolia, yeah. I know he did reshoots because he cut his hair in the Mohawk and that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um. And then Jared I know Leto and Ben Affleck. Jared like Leto said did. Before. Ben Affleck said he did. 
Uh, and then a lot of the CGI, like I think when we see Superman in the nightmare when he's floating over the Hall of Justice, yeah, very clearly not Henry Cavill. That's very clearly CGI. Yeah, yeah. But but fuck it, dude, finish the film. I did hear even I, I'm I'm not sure how confirmed it is that the Martian Manhunter scenes were not reshoots. That those were cut out. Those I I don't know if they were cut out because I remember years and years ago when the Snyder Cut was still a rumor. Something that leaked was the, um, the drawings. The what's the uh, the frame by frame that directors do? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. What's it called? Well, yeah, I forget what the the word's called. You were just talking about this too. Anyway, what those are? Yeah. When the director draws like what he has, what his mind's eye is for the film, those there are drawings that Zack Snyder did of Martian Manhunter in the scenes that he did. Mm-hmm. So that was always intended to be in the film. I don't know. Uh, uh, um, and also the actor who plays Swanwick, the general. The general has been there since Man of Steel. He Yes. He did the voice for Manhunter and he, he knew just like the guy who did Darkseid's voice was always like, I recorded a bunch of lines that were not in the film. Like the guy who, did, Ray Porter, the guy who does Darkseid's voice from the second the Justice League came out was like, they cut me out entirely from this film. Which and, is fucked up. And I'm breaking my NDA saying this. I don't give a fuck. He's like, they cut me completely out of this film. He's way more of a badass. Vi- like, Steppenwolf became more badass now that we understand his motive. I like Steppenwolf more in this film, and he's kind of like lesser of a villain, mm-hmm. but I like him more. Yeah, uh, but Darkseid was badass. Even uh, D- Desaad, right? Desaad. And who was the the other girl? Granny something. She's a uh, gra- goddess goodness or goodness, but yeah, something we, like that. She doesn't right? say anything. But all of those characters, they changed Steppenwolf's armor too because he looked super generic in the 2017 one. But now he has this like Pointy, moving, scary, it's scaly armor. Armor that is oh. So Did it good. almost have like a Black Panther ish thing where like it absorbed energy? Oh yeah, it's Did like. Did you see how it like kind of turned a little purple? What's too? the name of that metal that they adamantium? Is it Adam? No, no, is? no, no. They have. Um, is it not adamantium? Vibranium. Vibranium. They say adamantium once in the first Captain America because they say it's a, a mix of adamantium and vibranium. And then Fox was like, "You can't use the adamantium. That's oh, our God. Thing. Fuck out of here, studios. Just come on, make some good stuff for us." Imagine how happy fans would be if studios just gave us what we wanted. Just please give us this. what we want. This is everything I could have asked for. They looked fans in the face. Years for years and said there is no Snyder cut. But boom, look at that. The first announcement that they said when the Snyder cut was coming to us, I was lost, dude. This is truly there's one thing that we have to get into because what in the in the future when I have time travel, I'll go back in time and I'll meet younger me, and he's gonna be really upset that I didn't talk about this. Superman in the black suit. You know, when I first saw him in the black suit, I had to like adjust the brightness on my TV because I thought there was something wrong. Like I thought it was just like really dim. And I was so happy that I was wrong. And I was so happy that it was the black suit because I, even as someone that didn't really digest DC Comics like you did, understood the symbolism behind the black suit and the accuracy and the homage that it paid to the comics where Clark Kent did sport a black suit. The Superman black suit issues... It was he ran he did a good run in the black suit for a good couple of months um because it was a rebirth suit and it was truly like the death of superman and he's born again and this is the suit that he had I think originally according to my DC comic lore the black suit is a kryptonian health regeneration suit that's why he wears it um but I like this idea more of superman has multiple armors because Man of Steel set up this idea that the S isn't an S, it's a Kryptonian symbol for hope, and that the Kryptonians wear armor and they have this whole different world. I love this idea of him walking down this hallway and he's presented with different suits to wear. It senses him. It senses him. In Man of Steel, you see the black suit just as a background, as an Easter egg. And oh, so for him to put it on now is very self-serving and very comic book lore serving. It, the black suit Superman is something me and my brother used to talk about all the time of like, because they even tried to do it later on in like in the late nineties where Superman split and to do different Superman where he was blue Superman and red Superman. Uh, and, and everyone was like, this is just like, this is stupid. Yeah. It was really, cause like one was like based on electricity and like it was dumb, but black 
suit Superman is something that I never thought I would ever see. Just like I never thought I would see Doomsday. And I was kind of almost upset with Batman v Superman because of how they brought Superman or uh, Doomsday in so soon. But this film makes it an overarching story makes sense. Like they even make me like Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. Yeah. The fact that even with that ending scene. You know what that makes me think even more? What? That even the Batman v Superman director's cut is still heavily influenced by Warner Brothers. That if they would have just let Zack Snyder do what he wanted to do all along, mm-hmm. we wouldn't have Sears call-outs, Gillette call-outs. We wouldn't have Lex Luthor playing basketball with long hair. We would have real Zack Snyder storyline. That he wanted to have. He had comic book tie-ins. He had TV show tie-ins. He had an anime and a book set up for this Snyder universe that everybody said no to. DC Comics said no to his tie-in. Warner Brothers said no to his movies. Patty Jenkins said no to what all of his things. And it's such a shame because they're going by numbers, not by what's going to sell. You don't think with the popularity that this has brought up, the Snyder Cut, and it's positive reviews you don't think that there's a chance that warner brothers is going to budge and be like okay you could make one more thing i said that the snyderverse would never come out. i said that the snyder cut would never come out years ago i that. knew that it was a thing i believed 100 percent that it was a thing i did not think it would ever come out that being said i believe that this is warner brothers slash at&t's i'm sorry that we fired you because your daughter killed herself they are not giving Zack Snyder the keys to DC anymore. Like like Disney gave Kevin Feige the keys to Marvel. They should have. They really should have. But they're not. AT&T bought Warner Brothers, found out that Warner Brothers tried to save their chairman's bonuses by firing Zack Snyder and bringing in Joss Whedon. And in order to apologize to a man who lost his daughter due to suicide, gave him this consolation prize. And thus... Only gave him a consolation prize. They've already said there's no intention for a Justice League 2. There is no intention for a Zack Snyderverse. There is no intention for a Man of Steel 2. They've already even rumored to have hired J.J. Abrams and Michael B. Jordan for a new Superman film. Where it's going to be Black Superman. Black skin Superman, not Black Suit Superman. No, no, no. I got, I got you. I got you. I think it's not a mistake to be making that film. I think it's a mistake to not pursue multiple avenues if DC is trying to do the multiverse storyline. Mm-hmm. If they're going to do DC, if DC, what DC is doing better than Marvel is DC is making more comic book accurate movies based on this one and this one only. Um, but that being said, they're making multiple stories. Just like in comic books where it'd be like, yeah, Wonder Woman is going this way, but the tie into this also means it goes this way. Mm-hmm. Right? So, yeah, Wonder Woman went off to save St- um, Steve. Uh, we'll, we'll just call him Chris Pine. <laughs> off to save Chris Pine. But in this storyline, she didn't save Chris Pine, but it's that same Wonder Woman. And because she made a different decision, she went this way. But also in this one, because they made a different decision, she died. And now Batman has to make a different Justice League. Like... That's how comic books are. It's a onion of just layers and layers and layers. Of layers and hypotheticals and, and parallel universes. And movies have been afraid to make that universe because they know that the movie going franchise of kids liking Superman and parents taking their kids to see X-Men aren't going to understand it. But we're not in that timeline anymore. People like me and you are going to pay top dollar to go see this Justice League film. Yes. And then kids can go see the Justice League version. Yes. I mean, this is something that you could... I mean, you could show your kids the action no. sequences of this. No. Children should really not bloody. watch this film. It is really bloody. Let's say action sequences like the Wonder Woman action sequence nope. where it wasn't too brutal. Children should watch the Justice League. You think they would... Uh, yeah. Because it's 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 dumbed down to their level. It's brightened up to their level. They can understand what it is. And then just like when we were growing up and we were hearing stories of George Washington and how he had hippopotamus teeth and like that's what he did because he free he was the greatest American hero. And then we like get older and suddenly we realize like, oh, wait, he was an American hero, but he also had slaves and like he had like human teeth. It's like we learn more stuff as we get older. Justice League is for children. Zack Snyder's Justice League is for us. Yeah, I could I could see that. I mean, especially since it's also comic, four hours. Comic book films are not don't need to be for children. You don't, Deadpool, Logan, 
Zack Snyder's Justice League. Superhero films could be for kids to show you like, okay, here's like a simplified but that's, superhero that's film. That's too broad of an umbrella. But you know, you know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't have to be derived from the comic book source. Like just like, hey, here, you want to watch, um, you want to watch Spider-Man like save uh, New York City? Spider-Verse? Yeah, boom, here's for kids, you know? But if you want to see the fleshed out Peter Parker that has the dramatic background, that's Sam what Raimi, we- Sam Raimi, Spider-Man? That's, yep. Yeah, that's who we as- Adults. Adults in our mid-20s, people that grew up with these superheroes in mind. That's what it is. We grew up with the superheroes. Yeah. We are in a timeline right now where people who- Now, the people who run corp- corporations and run production companies have had superheroes in comic books their entire lives. So much to the point where even their parents had it in their entire lives. Mm-hmm. So we're not in a point where we're making hacky comic book films like Richard Donner's Superman or Tim Burton's Batman or even like that weird Avengers where Captain America is on a motorcycle and like, you know, you've seen the, the yeah. memes of it where it's really bad or the cartoons, the animated Batman series or the animated Spider-Man series. We're past all of that where we grew up on that. We want to take that a little bit further. That being said, we don't think that that should stop kids from liking Mm Spider-Man. We don't think that that should stop kids from liking Superman and Batman and shit like that. They should still, there should still be an avenue for them. Yeah. But I also want an avenue for us. And I don't think you should dilute my avenue just because you think that they're... I, I agree with that. That their money is worth it. Because it's my money at the end of the day. I agree. I agree. I don't think that there needs... We, we don't need to accommodate... Everybody. You can make niche markets. Yes. And this, I think what's thriving, Zack Snyder has proven that if you are a diehard comic book fan, even me, I'm not a diehard comic book fan, but I respect the fact that he was pulling from where... Uh, multiple issues from multiple issues Uh, and i keep saying it but he's pulling from the source material and giving these comic book fans what they want because that's 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 because he's a comic book fan it's not selling out it's it's giving us what we want for all of the right reasons when i was a kid and i would spend the night with my brother and we'd, we'd stay in the same room there were nights where we'd stay up all night talking about how how cool it would be to see a movie of the death of superman and yeah. if the sequel would be the return of Superman. Now, we always saw it as the return of Superman of being like with Steel and the Eradicator and Superboy, how cool that storyline would be. Yeah. And Zack Snyder is able to tell us out a storyline of the return of Superman in his own fresh, unrelated way that I could have never expected. I fucking love it. He gave me what I wanted when I didn't know I wanted it. Mm-hmm. And I love Zack Snyder for his directorial vision, for his cinematographical vision. Cinematog- cinematograph cinematographical Cin- yes that's the word i'm looking for cinematographical view and his taste in fucking comics yeah yeah because that's what it comes down to dude that is what it comes down to did you catch his cameo sellout. no who was he his cameo in uh when lois lane first leaves the coffee shop yeah you can see him directly when she's opening the umbrella yeah. he's directly in the window Wearing a vest and a shirt, tie, um, riding in the coffee shop. You know what I was too distracted by? The sign outside of the coffee shop says... Piping hot coffee. I'm not going to that coffee shop. I am. I don't want piping hot coffee. Hot coffee is what I'm looking for. You know what? I'm a black coffee drinker. Same. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I just don't so want to pipe all I hot. like is the heat. I just don't want it to destroy my taste buds. Give me it that perfect temperature. I'm mm. not saying that it has to be warm. And it should be like enough for me to like, okay, I'm in a rush. I need I need a sip now. So body temperature is 98 degrees. Mm-hmm. I want it at 99 to 100 degrees. Warm enough so I know it's warm in my mouth. Yes. But I don't want it burning me. Don't destroy my taste buds. 101 degrees. For. Maybe. That sounds perfect. And it's a good number. I mean... Clearly, we rate this film very, very high. If it's, it can't be that good. It's. I, is it as good as people say? If, yes. If I'm the person who says this is the best film ever made, it's, is it? I would say I would say it's up there. It's. I would have to see all the all of the films that are said to be the greatest films in history. Citizen Kane. What other ones that you could throw in there? Godfather Part. Godfather. Godfather. Um. 
I had a, a slurry of a other movies. A streetcar named Desire. Yes. Wizard of Oz. The Dictator. Stuff like that, right? The, well, The Great Dictator. The, the dicta- Great Dictator, I'm The sorry. Dictator is <laughs> the, Sasha the movie Sasha Baron Cohen. Yes, which not is that one. also one of the pivotal cinematic masterpieces. Put that up against Citizen Kane and Zack Snyder's Justice League. Did you hear League? his version of Snoop Dogg's... Uh, <laughs> It's a uh, it's a version to uh, to bar- bargain. Ala, Ala yeah, um, this movie is definitely up there and very dense. I'm not going to say that it's not. Both itself objectively, if there was no backstory with Zack Snyder and his d- daughter, and with the fight against Warner Brothers and like this whole job the production Sweden, yeah, of it, yes. Even without that, this is an incredible cinematic masterpiece. I agree. In my opinion, every single character you care for uh is fleshed out and the action sequences are impeccable i've read some negative reviews on how much slow motion there is eh. but that's Zack snyder come on have you never seen a Zack snyder it's film? a superhero movie. we just watched soccer punch yes 50 percent of soccer punches in slow motion yes now imagine that action choreography and the cinematic aspects but rated r and with your favorite superhero i characters. love that it's r yes and I forgot that it's R. More superhero movies need to be rated R. But also, make superhero movies that aren't. Yeah, for the kids. Make uh, Lego Batman. Please. But also give me Robert Pattinson Batman. I want my kids to know, respect, and love the superheroes that I grew up with, but they don't need to know all of the like. All of the heroes that I grew stuff. up with reading have aged with me. So much to the point where when I was a kid, I watched Superman try and learn how to make his way in metropolis and be be an adult in metropolis Mm -hmm. now i'm watching superman raise his son literally raise his son to the point where now we're in dc future state now i'm getting super nerdy but now we're in the dc future state where his son has taken on the mantle of superman and superman himself as kal-el has moved on to his own next lifetime Mm -hmm. like he's already doing something else in a different galaxy trying to help that world now Mm -hmm. because his son is helping earth yeah. And it's like, I'm watching Superman age and grow, and I want to see that. At the same time, I also want to see what would happen if Superman, like, if the world ended and Superman's trying to save the Earth still. Or I want to see what happens if Superman was, like, in the 20s. I want to see all these different storylines. But at the same time, I still want to see the Superman that I grew up with. The yeah. Clark Kent, Earth 151, Superman, Earth, like, that's, I'm sorry, 151 is Marvel. Superman, Earth 1 which is the DC Comics version of the multiverse, that's what I want to see. Clark Joseph Kent is what I want to see. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, yeah, show me the the black Superman. Show me the Clark Kent that has a kid. Show me the Clark Kent that never made it to Earth. Show me the Clark Kent that's a Russian communist. I want to see it all. We live in the generation of consumers that like what-ifs. Variations. We like the what-ifs. My favorite Marvel comics are the what-if comics. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what that's they're... What that- so many of these comics are just like, what if comics? What if Superman died? What if Lois Lane died? Both this and Kingdom Come are Elseworld comics. They're they're slated as Elseworld. There was a whole run that DC did where they're like, well, what if this happened? Mm-hmm. What if this happened? What if this happened? And the Elseworlds are some of my favorite arcs in any comics. As flawed human beings, we often find ourselves lost in our own hypotheticals and our own what ifs. And so, what better to experience those through our favorite characters, right? It's only natural. This is such an insane book. The art is by Alex Ross, who is my far favorite, best comic book artist I've ever seen in my life. His art is so impeccably great. Um, if I can leave the baddies with one thing of my nerdist and I'm sorry if I've dried every single vagina that's ever listened to this or moistened them I can't maybe two or three um, that's more Kingdom than enough <laughs> Kingdom Come is such an incredible issue such an incredible story arc all you need to know is just like the ideas of who these heroes are and you can read Kingdom Come and be like what the fuck happened because Superman is old and Wonder Woman is old and Batman is old and they fight and Lex Luthor's fat and it's <sighs> shoot me a, a message. I'll talk to anybody about kingdom come literally, literally my whole life. Since I've read this issue, I've just been dying to meet people who have read kingdom come. I've met about four or five different people who can like touch my, my tit for tat with you. And I just <sighs> stop me before I keep going. No, stop. 
Thank you. <laughs> Guys, no, it's incredible. watch this fucking film. Watch this movie. I'm I'm sorry if I've nerded out way too much. I love DC Comics. No, I love Superman. Is. I love Batman. I love Wonder Woman. I bought my niece a Wonder Woman, her first Wonder Woman comic last week. Nice. She loved it, huh? She doesn't know how to read and doesn't really understand what I gave it to her. But you know what? She's gonna. She's gonna know. She's gonna. I learn. took my nephew to the first comic book store he ever went to in his life. That's great. Would you like to know the total of our comic book store? How much? Over a hundred and fifty dollars of comic books. Beautiful. Rightfully so. I you know? would scold you if it was less than ninety nine dollars, man. The best part about it was when they told us the the total. I looked at him and I go, "Oh, I forgot my wallet." Oh, you should have. Uh, you should have said, "Sorry, little Matt." Uh, I forgot my wallet in the car and don't come back. <laughs> Ooh, that's something his dad would have done to me. Oh. <laughs> um, but uh, hey, guys, read comic books. Do not listen to the negative Nancys. Don't let the art of the comic book die. Don't be the lazy fuck that just didn't read comic books and just wants to go straight to the movies. But if you are, respect no, start where with it came the movies. from. Start with the movies. And that, because movies. Or how I got into comic books. I'm just saying don't shoo away the possibility of reading the comic book. Don't. uh, And I can take a note of that of like, don't. um, Don't muck anybody's kink. Yeah. That that's the thing with art. You you can't say that a, a, an art form is antiquated because someone else out there is still respecting it. There it's there are DC job. and Marvel animes that I think would be really really good that I'm interested in looking into. Yeah, because it's something interested that I'm interested in, right? So yeah, I don't think anime is gay anymore because I'm grown up and I I know that that was just an antiquated view and a, a short short sighted view. And also the. Uh... The usage of gay in a derogatory fashion has no, not derog- just aged in a, out in a, in a lame fashion. Yes. Um, I just think that you just have to find your way into it. I recently was talking to somebody who's like, oh, I've never read comic books in my life. Where do I even get started? It's mm-hmm. so intense and so scary. I was like, honestly, just pick one up. Dude, I mean like. Just go to a store, find something that looks pretty, grab a comic book, start reading you'll meet a character you'll meet a story you'll find something that you really enjoy and then follow that thread start pulling that thread out of the sweater until you have an entire ball of yarn what anime is is basically just uh japanese comics it's a cover of your favorite song you know like an anime oh. version of something that you really like you just think of and it. i love covers it's just a different songs. genre man you fuck that's all it is dude you got me yeah you're going to find some covers that you don't like, and that's okay, but there's going to be something out there. You're going to be like, oh, shit, Seven Nation Army in this jazz version? Fuck yeah, I'll listen to that. That's you what an anime could be for you. got me. I know you like your, uh, I know you like similes and metaphors, and so I've learned to speak that way uh, to you. I'm going to go home and buy a DC anime tonight. Dude, check it out and let me know what you think, man. There's do do research. You look look at reviews, nonetheless, because the there's one. shitty animes out there. I should finish New Frontier first because I'm in the middle of that then one. Then do that, and then watch the anime and let me know what you think. Baddies. Yes. Um, or should we call them goodies? Hey, goody goodies. This is I can't see. Is this one of our longest episodes? Not one of our long. Mm, not one of our longest. I mean, like just right there. Feels like it's right there. It's one of our longest Just You and Me episodes, for sure. For sure. I'm sorry if I've nerded out too much. I just love the shit so much. Don't apologize. This is man. a great fucking DC Watch it. film. Uh, two, Zack Snyder. One million out of five is what I rate this. Two million out of five. Zack Snyder, you are, and if I could just take a moment, I know you're not listening, and I, and if you are, Zack Snyder, you are an incredible director, an incredible visionary, a fantastic man, and an impeccable father. Autumn is proud to see this film. Yes. And I know you take solace in knowing that she loves this film. I love this film. As a true DC fan, Christian loves this film. As a comic book fan, this is an incredible cinematography temple in history. The fact that you were able to finish this film the way you wanted to finish this film, Zack Snyder, thank you. Thank you. Not a lot of people would have been able to do what you've done. I am eternally grateful for the fact that I got to live in a time era where I get to see Zack Snyder's films. And... um, yeah, you truly are an inspiration to me as a filmmaker, as a comic book reader, and as a content creator. Thank you, Zack Snyder. 
Good job with this. And way to handle all the haters, because you get a bunch of hate and yeah, you handle it like haters, a champ. Because this dude. was an incredible masterpiece. Yeah, you've all and you, yeah. Man. Baddies, check it out. If you don't have HBO Max, subscribe to it now. Or this is the reason. For it. This is the reason to get HBO Max. Is yeah. honestly for Justice HBO Max League. is kind of cool. After I finished this movie on HBO Max, it says check out Zack Snyder's top picks on HBO, and I was like, oh, I'm curious as to like what did he pick a bunch of films? He picked a bunch of films, Which ones, dude. Can you name a couple? Uh, Blade Runner, both uh, Blade Runner, the final cut, and a Blade Runner. 2049 uh there was a lot of uh the shining was on there a lot yes. of stanley kubrick was on there yeah that makes sense um and a bunch of other classics a bunch of other movie classics he put rick and morty on there rick and morty's one of the picks so one of the things that was cut out from the original thing was when bruce wayne is in flash the flashes yeah that wasn't in the theatrical version but when he was in, was in Flash's the, lair. The original trailer that Zack Snyder produced, there is a Rick and Morty in one of the screens in the background of the Flash's thing. They cut it out in this one, in this version. But we know, we've seen that that cut where there is the Rick and Morty call it's, out. It's playing in the background. Because Zack Snyder's a fucking G, homie. Zack Snyder, you're a baddie, even though you never heard our shit. Yes. I hope you fucking listen to me, Zack Snyder. I love you so fucking much. I would murder for you. Oh, no, 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 no. I was really hoping you'd say something different than that because that's a, a little far. And that's our time. And that's our time. I got to pee. I have to pee. I got to pee and I got to go. So if you're not going to say anything, I'm going to say goodbye to the baddies. Baddies, thank you very much. Let us know if you liked our review of uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, we are planning out... Planning... Uh, on coming out with more ICBTGs for y'all. Uh, so rec start recommending some good movies. I don't know if we'll throw it on the, the, the regular stuff or on our future Patreon. Uh, but yes, once again, visit our online store via the website. Buy some of our merch. Continue to support. Alejandro is wearing our very new baddie shirt. And if you can't tell, the shirt is ivory with a dark burgundy threading that says baddie. So and, if you're a baddie, pick it up. And Christian is wearing our last action hero suit drawn or shirt drawn by the incredible artist Josh Wolf. Josh Wolf, Such shout out to you. Such an incredible piece of artwork that he did. We slapped that motherfucker on a million pieces of shirts. Um, buy them because it is a great fucking shirt. The quality of these shirts are impeccable too. We also um, have that um, logo on stickers. We yes. also have a bunch of new stickers. We have baddie stickers as well. These baddie stickers are dope. Get them. They're piping hot. Um, Yeah, I really wanted my last words to be that I would murder for Zack Snyder, but I think we should plug our merch. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. I would murder for you, Zack Snyder. Yeah. Do 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 do